really challenge in this one, takes the win. He was just kind of out there quiet. Now here's everybody coming back, getting ready in the starting area. This is such a different racetrack, Ricky, where you go through Monster Alley, then you kind of got to work your way back out into the start gate. What's that like? Uh, it's, it's a lot different, like you said. Pretty neat when you go out there. It's a big, long sweeper in the back and uh, kind of give yourself a, a, a time to rest and, and lay it down. Big old sweeper back there, yeah. real fun. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you see as some of the riders coming off of the uh, parade lap gives them a chance to uh, take a look at the track just before the main event, see if they've put any water down if there's any ruts you know if the if the uh, track has changed it's a safety thing plus it's something you know to uh, try to gain an advantage um, and, and I tell you this is where uh, the guys that are confident um, they shake off the nerves the guys that, that aren't confident they just don't feel good about what's going on this is where the nerves start to set in wouldn't you agree Ricky oh ab absolutely and it's kind of quiet back there a lot different than the normal supercross where you're right there and it gets back the there and it's quiet. Here. Yeah. I mean, this place is alive tonight. This, I mean, what a great night. It, you know, certainly, it certainly has. And, and all our speed viewers, they know that whenever Carmichael <laughs> is in the booth with us, the fireworks, I mean, it's yeah. not going to rain like no. at Daytona, no. obviously. But I, I think we're going to have to change his nickname to Chaos Carmichael because yeah. every time you show up, chaos unfolds that's, and we have a great race. That's good. We got a lot on the line tonight. East-West shootout. It's going to be good stuff, I'm telling you. One thing about Dungey's got that number one plate on there. Might be a little bit of pressure. It gets it gets heavy, right? But you've won the East-West Shootout. I have 1998. Yep. And that was when uh, you and Kevin Windham had that as incredible battles. I remember there was a still photo in one of the magazines. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Of Carmichael just, I mean, T-boning Windham. These guys went at it. I mean, both guys were champions, and it ended up, you know, Ricky came out on top. I, uh, I yeah, I did. Let's Actually, take a look at the stuff. track map here in our Rockstar track. Map. Now, Ricky, what part of the track of the White Scott is going to be the most important? I think uh, the hard pack slick turn, especially after the triple. It's a long sweeping turn there. You guys can see it the way on after top. the triple. And yeah. then uh, the whoop section. Two, a big, one long, long, long right section right there, like Jeff just showed you. Uh, very, very key. There's going to be a couple guys that are going to be making a lot of time there. And uh, here we go. We're going to find out here in a second. 30-second board is up. The Monster Girl holding it sky high for us. Here we go. Going through their routine. The Get ready. Is, they, the crowd is on their feet here in the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. Here we go. Main event time for the East-West Shootout. The first time Stroop and Porcel and the rest of the top dogs from the East have seen Dungey, Weimer, and Morris and the top guys from the West. The game's going to drop, and they're going to head to turn one. Who's it gonna be? Looks like a it's a guy. It's Warden! Oh! Blake Warden up at the front! His teammates go whole shot and they see him over the ski jump! And his teammate Trey Kennard is second. You know he has been on the gas. And the Charlie guys, guys third. None of the number one plates in the top two positions. Here's Marcel. He's challenging from third. Denji stuck back at about 7th or 8th as they come across the line. Yeah, Denji was ninth actually. You see him at the top of the screen as they charge through the whoop section. Oh, look at the teammates almost getting together there. Man, I bet the nerves are just going right now. How about he can him? Him. This young Blake Horton, you know the thing I like about him, Ricky, he doesn't seem to be intimidated by anything. No, I know he's had a win this year and uh, he's to back it up. You know, you gotta uh, get out there and get out front. We're gonna see what's gonna happen here. It's a long race. These guys are going for it right off the bat. So we can see what happens here. All three of the top three riders here have, um, they all won with the Supercross Lights main in their very first year, so naturally gifted. Look at a smooth okay. sweeper, just for Purcell trying to set him up there, swing it wide, trying to get him up on the inside. Look at this man. This is a, such a cool section, very fast. And what an upset it would be for the rider's fourth, Jake Moss, if he could grab his first ever lights, maybe the bin on a day today when it's a long shot day. Morton okay. still out in front of Kennard. Porcel running in second or third. Here's the whoops. Watch Porcel. He is flying Whoa. through here. And a problem with Jeff as he got in there. Oh. Warden has a problem that allows Kennard to come through. Here comes Porcel to the inside. He's going to oh. go for second. Can't get the traction he needs. 
fights his way out of the corner, but Wharton holds on to second place. Very technical section there. I see a lot of mistakes going to be made there. You're turning up an off-hammer jump, and you guys, you don't have no side traction. Very tough. Look at this. And Dungy is out. up. Dungy is up to fifth, guys. He's right behind this pack and closing, so he's going to get into this mix. Across the line, Austin Stroop way back Here's in the pack. Marcel He's 11. Charging to the inside. He's oh, back in the corner. Oh, He's got to be in the monster alley. There we go. I guess he's not going to the pool, Rob. It's time to race. Not yet. Blake Horton saying if he didn't have a shot to win, he just head back to the casino in the pool. Now he's up to second, thinking about a win here tonight. I'm telling you, though, Ralph, look at 42. Jake Ross, he's put in some fine runs here lately. This team has gotten faster and better all the way through the series here. Just looks like he's kind of back there cruising. Don't well, like whoa, that. Megan Purcell from the, the right to the left. He's not letting off the throttle. And Jeff, here comes Dungey. Dungey's closing in. Oh, Horton oh. gets together with Moss. And Moss goes by. Moss shoulders. is now up to third. Muscled him out of the way. Gives him the shoulders. He says, this position is mine. I'm out of here. Look at this, charging man. through. There Moss. you see Dungey on the one coming in. Uh -oh. Moss doing work. Look at Dungey, like you said, sneaking up there. So much racing left, but what a great start already, man. These guys are hanging it out. Only Moss, three of 15. Moss's best finish in a main event is a fifth so far this year in Seattle, so he's already got a season best. We can hold on for third. So, fun section back here, man. That last stuff, you kind of did really pretty good traction back there tonight. You can lay the throttle through and lean that thing over and let it eat, man. Yeah. Let it dig into the mulch. That'd be about the only mulch on the track. As you can see, the rest of it is really difficult. That's Dry, slippery, coming over the finish line. Into That's the woods, here comes Dungy. That third it. rider in line is Dungy. Oh! Now he cuts up the inside of the goes to the pass. I think Dungy's going to get him through the boot. He's, he's, he's got it. Oh, he did not oh, let him. he didn't. Uh -oh. He was right there, but Morton is going to hold him off. Dungy tries to cut back inside, can't complete the pass. He was really patient there. He had a position, but he was on the outside. Look at Dungy's trying to set him up on the inside. Take a look at the lap times. Canard's out front. His passes are the 102.6. Dungy, the only other rider, he's in a 106. Here's, here's Dungy inside on Wharton. He's got it now. Got him. Now he can do work on Moss. Still got plenty of time left. We're only on lap four. You're going to see Brian put in a good lap right here. He has a clear track. He's going to make up a lot of time. And how about the riding gear of these riders? They're having the color wars out there. And the gear companies, Fox, totally everybody just totally brightening it up here for the final round. And if nothing makes it look as good. As a like top seven to the podium. Out front, that's right. Trey Kennard, the winner of the last race in Seattle. Trying to get another one here. Man, Roy Moss and, and Dungy taking our thoughts here away we go. for a second Dungy's quick through the whoops. He's on the lap. Moss is on the gas. We are right. Boy, is he committed, isn't he? And that's what we were talking about, Ricky, earlier, was how much commitment you have to have through the whoops. And you can see it with Moss and Dungy, both of them. Absolutely. They, uh, you have to commit there. You have to go into it fast. Uh, Dungy isn't wheeling into the whoops. I think he's losing a lot of time there. Wow, what a drive he got on this turn here. He's next to him. He's, he's running got it. He's got it. He's got Far the to bar, inside of the next corner, stands him up, takes the position away. He's out of there. Ricky, you mentioned wheeling into the whoops. What does that do as opposed to not wheeling in? Because when you wheel in, you don't, your front tire doesn't hit the first loop and essentially you slow are. you down and pop you up. Exactly. Where if you do really into it, if you, if you really into it, you just, you know, you, you just got that momentum going. And at the end of the loop section, you're going so much faster. Well, and as we come around here, guys, we're going to take a look. The first set of whoops, there's no roller, but here there's this roller going in. And you see both yeah. guys lift the front wheel. Yeah. Fastest guys on the track right now. There goes Dungy. He he did he tries to go into it with the front wheel and soak it up with his body to actually pull the bike up to him and use his body weight to push it down. One thing about Dungy as well, Ricky, and you know this because you train with him a lot. He is he's getting bigger. The kid is maturing not only mentally and how he's, he approaches his race, not physically. That's a big big man. Absolutely. I mean, he's turned into a man. He's got a couple years of experience. Watch this replay here, guys. This is Blake Wharton, the oh, rookie. Man. And Weimer goes barreling past him. And then 
He makes a mistake. Weimer catches him, goes oh. off the track. Wharton's night is over. Even uh, Weimer went off the track there, if you guys see, man. And yeah, Weimer, there's quite a bit of runoff room there. Tons of photographers. Everybody's that. here for the biggest race of the season. Hopefully, Jake can get in there. Dungey is putting it down right now. He's got a 